Good morning students this is your english lesson in this lesson we are going to read a story in tasha's doll unit number 17 from oxford reading circle let's get started do you remember reading about the wicked witch called baba yaga who lived in a forest well here is another tale in which you will meet her Natasha lived on the edge of a great forest. She was only 8 years old when her mother died. The poor girl was heartbroken for she loved her mother very much. All that she had to remember her mother by was a beautiful doll her mother had given her. Take great care of the doll her mother had told her and feed her and ask her for help whenever you are in need. but never tell an anybody about her when natasha's mother died her father married a woman who already had two daughters the two girls and their mother did not love natasha in the hot summer the stepmother made natasha walk outdoors in the sun and in the winter she found the worst jobs for her in the icy wind and snow natasha never complained she kept her doll with her wherever she went and when life became unbearable she fed the doll and asked for help miraculously all her troubles went away and her jobs were done one day natasha's father went off on a long journey natasha was sad to see him go because when he was around life did not seem so harsh that night as darkness fell and the wind and rain howled howled cry out loudly and swirled outside the house the stepmother set the three girls to work one of the daughters was told to make lace the second had to knit stockings and natasha was ordered to spin the girls were left with one candle burning and the woman went to bed after some time one of the daughters plucked the wick out of the candle wick out fluid moisture and deliberately put it out deliberately intentionally oh dear said the girl the candle has gone out and there is no wick whatever will mother say when she finds we haven't been able to do our work the other daughter said to natasha go to baba yaga's house and get another light natasha shuddered shuddered trembled shivered she knew about baba yaga the mighty which lived in a hut in the forest and she rode through the air in a mortar she was so powerful that she could crush any human who crossed her path now natasha was faced with the problem if she stayed at home her stepmother would make her life miserable if she went to the forest baba yaga might do her greater harm she went as she picked up her doll and a crust of bread and set off for the dark forest when they near the forest natasha fed her doll with some bread little doll she sobbed please help me now nobody has ever returned from baba yaga's house i'm afraid i really need your help the doll chewed on the bread and her eyes glistened like bright stars glisten shine with a sparkling light have no fear natasha said the doll no harm will come to you but remember do not tell a soul about me the forest was very dark that night because of the clouds and the rain the wind howled through the trees and the swaying branches cracked and groaned as if they were in the pain natasha drew her cloak tightly around herself and marched on clutching the little doll close to her chest she walked and walked and after an hour or two she heard the distant third of horses hooves hooves the hard foot of an animal at first he thought it was thunder but then the steady beating of the hooves got louder and closer natasha froze as the earth trembled under her feet then suddenly a horseman dressed all in white thundered by on a brilliant white steed steed a horse used for riding as they passed natasha and this appeared into the trees the sky beyond showed the first light of dawn 
Natasha wondered who the horseman was and where he was going. She was frightened, but at last the sky was now looking less dark and threatening. And as Natasha continued her journey, she again heard a sound, a grey thundering that grew louder until suddenly a second rider and a horse appeared from the trees. They both shone brightly as red as scarlet. Natasha looked up and noticed that the sun had risen high in the sky and it was day. On she went and then at the end of the day when the sun was about to set she reached a clearing. In the middle stood a hut with feet like the claws of hands. All around the hut there was a fence made of bones and on each bone there was a skull. Natasha had never seen anything so strange or so frightening and she shuddered. Again there was a noise and a third horseman galloped out of the trees. The horse and rider were as black as the night. When they had disappeared, the sun went down and it became dark. Only the bones gleamed white and the empty eye sockets of the skulls lit up like lanterns. Natasha watched in horror. It was as if her feet had been nailed to the ground. She could not move. Then from the forest came a loud screeching. The wind picked up and the branches swayed and trembled and the dead leaves rustled on the ground, hurtling through the air on a huge motor. With her long black hair training behind her came Baba Yaga. The motor circled the hut and came down beside the gate. The old witch got out of the motor and sniffed the air. Then she cackled loudly, cackled, laughed in a loud way and screamed, Ay, I smell the flesh of a young girl. She peered, peered, look with difficulty. She peered out into the darkness and croaked, Who is there? Out, out you come. Also, Natasha was frightened. She took courage and stepped forward. I'm Natasha, she said softly. My stepsisters sent me for a light. Oh, so it is you, said the witch, catching sight of Natasha. I know those girls and their mother too. Well, you get no light unless you work for it. Then abruptly, abruptly, suddenly, she turned to the gates and shrieked. Open gates, Baba Yaga will enter. The gates swung open and Baba Yaga passed through them and entered the house. Natasha followed very slowly. Now, said the witch, when Natasha entered the house, bring a light from the skulls outside and serve my supper. It's in the oven and the soup is in the cauldron. Cauldron, a large iron pot for cooking. Natasha brought in light, served the soup, and then watched in amazement as Baba Yaga gobbled, gobbled, eat noisily, up more food than ten men could have eaten. A whole goose, a couple of chickens, a roast meat of various kinds, and whole loaves of bread. She swallowed this down with large pails of a foul-smelling liquid. At the end of her meal, she threw Natasha a crust of bread. That's your super girl, she shouted, but you must earn it. While I am off tomorrow, you must clear out the yard, sweep the hot, wash the linen, and cook the dinner. Then there is another little job. You see that sack? It's full of black beans, wheat, and poppy seeds. Sow them into their separate lots, and if a single one is out of place, into the cauldron you shall go, and I will have you for breakfast. With that, Baba Yaga stomped off to bed, stomped, walked with intentionally heavy steps. Natasha took the doll from her pocket and gave her the piece of bread. Oh, little doll, cried Natasha, how am I to do all these tasks? How can you help now? Natasha, have no fear, whispered the doll, say your prayers and go to sleep. 
Natasha curled up on the floor by the stove and tried to sleep. All night long, the house echoed with the rumbling snores of the witch. Somehow, Natasha fell asleep, but she woke early before the first glimmer of day. Natasha sat up and looked around her. She did not know where to begin. The place was so filthy, filthy, dirty. Then, just as she was about to start work, she heard the white horse and rider thundering past the house. The lights in the skulls along the fence flickered and went out, flickered to shine with the light. When Baba Yaga woke up, Natasha hid beside the stove. Baba Yaga soon left the house and Natasha washed from the window as she got into the water and soared up into the sky. Just then, the red horse and rider came thundering by and the sun shone brightly in the sky. Natasha longed to be out in the fresh open air, but she had much to do. She turned to start her work and was surprised to find that it was all done. The room was sparkling. The yard was cleared, the linen was washed, and the grains were neatly separated into bins. In the kitchen, the vegetables were already chopped, the bread was in the oven, and the meat was in the trays, ready to be cooked. Natasha smiled at the little doll and then went out to the edge of the forest to pick some flowers and sit in the sunshine. What a pleasant day she had! But the day did not last long. The light faded and soon the black horse and rider spat past. Darkness fell. The skulls lit up and with a hiss down swept the mortar carrying Baba Yaga. The witch stormed into the house, stormed to rush about. As she looked around and saw how clean everything was, she became less fearsome. You have worked well, girl, said Baba Yaga. But why are you so quiet? Natasha felt she had better say something before the old witch got angry. So she said politely, may I ask a question, Granny? Ask, said Baba Yaga. But remember, not every question leads to good. The more you know, the older you grow. Who is the white rider? Asked Natasha timidly. He is my bright morning. He brings the earliest light. Who is the red rider? He is my fiery sun. He brings the day. Who is the black horseman? He is my dark night. My faithful servants all. Now I have a question for you. How did you do all the work so quickly? My do, my do, shutter, stuttered Natasha. She was just about to tell Baba Yaga about her doll when she suddenly remembered her mother's word. My darling mother gave me a blessing before she died. She continued hastily and that helps me. A blessing? Shrieked Baba Yaga angrily. I want no blessed ch children here. Out you get away but you have earned your pay too. So take one of the skulls on your way. Natasha ran to the gate and plucked one of the skulls off the fence. She sped through the forest and did not stop till she got home. How happy she was to get home. But as she walked through the door, she was greeted with a scream, not a smile. Why have you taken so long? shouted her stepmother. We have been in the dark for three days. Natasha's stepsister snatched the skull from her hands and they and their mother stared into the eyes of the lighted skull. And as they stared, they crumbled slowly to the floor. In just a few moments, there was nothing left of them but three piles of white ash. The light in the skull spluttered and died. Natasha stared in amazement, but she was home now, and at least she did not have Baba Yaga to worry about. Later that night, her father returned, and tearfully she told him all that had happened to her. In the morning, Natasha and her father buried the skull and the ash in the garden, and in time, a bush sprang up out of the black earth, a rose Bush with red and white roses. Natasha lived happily ever after that and often plucked a rose or two and placed them in the hair of her little doll. Now come to the exercises. A. Questions 1. What made Natasha heartbroken? Answer. Natasha's mother had died when she was 8 years old. She loved her mother dearly and her death broke Natasha's heart. 2. What blessing did Natasha's mother make for her child? Answer. Her mother had made a doll for her child. 
3. Why do you think the stepsister sent Natasha specially to Baba Yaga's place to get another light? Why not some other place? Give reasons for your answer. Answer. They sent her to Baba Yaga to get rid of her for good. She was loved by her father and always completed the chores without difficulty. They sent her to Baba Yaga so that she never returns back. It was famous that whoever went to Baba Yaga's house was crushed to death. 4. Had Natasha not had the magic doll, how do you think she would have cleaned the old witch's extremely filthy house? Answer. She would remember her mother and say her prayers devotionally and ask God for her help. In this way, some spirit will come to help her. 5. Were the stepmother and stepsisters served right in the end for their behavior with Natasha? Give reasons for your answer. Answer. Yes, they were served right in the end for their behavior with Natasha because they were cruel and did not love Natasha and they wanted to get rid of her. B. Reference to context. Read these lines from the poem and then answer the questions. 1. I want no blessed children here. Out you get. A. Who said these words and to whom? Answer. Baba Yaga said this to Natasha. B. Where was the speaker sending the other person? Answer. Baba Yaga was sending her back home. C. What happened to the other person after she got out of the speaker's home? Answer. When she reached home, her stepmother scolded her very sharply. C. Words and meanings. Look in a dictionary for the correct meaning. A. Shutter. To speak with difficulty. B. Splutter. Make a series of short, explosive, spitting or choking sounds. C. Mutter. Say something in a low or barely audible voice. D. Babble. Talk rapidly and continuously in a foolish, excited or incomprehensible way. E. Murmur. A low, continuous background noise. F. Mumble. Say something indistinctly and quietly, making it difficult for others to hear. G. Grumble. Complain about something in a bad-tempered way. H. Stammer. Speak with sudden involuntary pauses and a tendency to repeat the initial letters of words. Thanks for listening. For new videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you like my videos, please share and like.